Our PPP loan was officially forgiven today. Hell yeah, baby. Woo! Yep. We actually were able to regain all $20 billion that we used for the bunker. It was all forgiven today. Yep. Yep. And if you want to regain your student loan debt, if you want any kind of loan relief, f*** you. Pick yourself <laughs> right. up by your goddamn bootstraps. Why don't you work harder and, and not do that and not suck on the government titty? Yeah, there's been a lot of that. I've actually really enjoyed... All the Harvard PhDs and literal billionaires yeah. like Mitt Romney who are like, this is an outrage that students are getting $10,000 out of debt. Um, Mitt Romney, you're worth half a billion dollars. Like, have you, do you know anything about debt at all? Like, shut the fuck, shut your mouth, bitch. Look, I, I had student loan debt. I paid mine off. Uh, it was not easy to do, but I would, I'm... I don't know. I would never be like, huh, I suffered, so you should too. Like, that's fucking psychotic. Like, that's you're, the, just, uh, you're just trying to cut policy off of being selfish. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that, so that's, that's the main talking point I see people saying about the student loan debt forgiveness is like, what about the people that already paid off their debt? It's like, great. They know how shitty it is. And, and most normal human beings, I think, that, it, would probably it, feel like uh, others should not have to go through that. I mean, you could say that about so many things, though, right? Yeah. You I could got, say that about people who, you know... There's a TikTok about, uh, there's a there's a black girl on TikTok that made a, a, a joke about that exactly, about talking about, like, the Underground Railroad and, like, the abolition of slavery and, and how, uh, you know, it's like... No one is gonna say like, "Oh well, we had to, we had to escape," and now you're just gonna abolish slavery across the board. Like that's fucked up. <laughs> or, um, yeah. Or you know, oh well, I, uh, I had cancer and I had to survive it, and it was really difficult with chemo. But now there's a vaccine. Uh, no, everyone should go through yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. just like so stupid. And as far as debt goes, um, I mean. Debt relief is pretty commonplace, and that debt should not even exist in the first place because you shouldn't have to pay to go to college. You should not have to pay to become a more productive member of the workforce. So it's, it's unbelievable. And, and by the way, the amount of people that I know personally, there's more people that have student debt than not. The amount of debt these people have is insane. You're literally crushing the rising class, the uh, uh, future working class of this country with un unsurmountable debts, okay? Well, that is by design, Ethan. Um, well, that I... Is, that is li quite literally on purpose. It's the same exact principle as employer-backed insurance programs. Uh, it is a way to make sure that there is a permanent underclass of workers. But it's everybody. Yeah, no, but like... Become everybody. It's not, it's, it's not everybody, because like the, it's the, the more, incredibly wealthy don't have to go through that, or are not shackled or burdened in the same dude. in the same way that like a middle class family is, though, because education is the most... Education is the common denominator for upward social mobility, right? So you are, you are essentially ensuring, and this is something that uh, Ronald Reagan's advisor uh, uh, talked about, all the way back when Ronald Reagan was a governor, when he moved to privatize or at least offer tuition at the UCs in the University of California, because it used to be free mm -hmm. in the, uh, up until the 70s. Nearly. The University of California nearly. was free. Yeah. Ronald Reagan's advisor very famously said, and he, he worked for Nixon as well, very famously said, ensuring that everyone has a college education is going to have a serious, is going to create serious problems in the future, in the long term, because you will have an educated working class which then will uh, be able to more effectively uh, communicate their demands, more effectively fight back, uh, and also will be harder to control. And someone needs to still clean the toilets, basically. He didn't say that, but I'm I mean, here, I, I have the quote. It's, we are in danger of producing an educated uh, proletariat. That's dynamite. We have to be selective on who we allow to go through higher education. I think probably what they fear is that people with a higher education tend to lean more democratic and you know for everything for them is just political points so you have to keep people dumb and angry for them to vote republican or that, nobody that's would. one that's one nobody component. would ever that's that's certainly one component of it but like i said it's it's because they're also worried about unemployment why are they worried about unemployment because the more educated people are 
the less likely they are going to, you know, take janitorial positions, like positions that are profoundly important, however, um, easy to cycle through because uh, there's, a, there's a lower barrier of entry. There's not a lot of like skills you need to learn. You can learn it on the job. So these are seen as replaceable jobs, even though we consider them essential because they are essential. Um, if, if they are no longer seen as like easily replaceable, then or if there is a, a lot of uh, shortages there, because a lot of people are now skilled, skilled laborers, um, all of a sudden you're going to have to pay them more. And you can't have or that. allow that immigrants hurts the profit in margin. Some shit, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, that's a real thing, right? I mean, if you stop immigration, it stops a lot of these low skill entry level jobs from getting filled, no? Well, um, immigration is, is, is certainly the way that like uh, both parties utilize uh, the, the permanent underclass. Like, there is, a, there is a constantly refilling pool of undocumented labor that you can kind of use as a you can use and abuse and then and then cast aside when they ever uh, ask for like back pay or so, ever complain yeah, about yeah. like sexual harassment in the workplace right. there are many such examples of this like purdue is one of the best examples that comes to mind the purdue chicken factory mm -hmm. like they purposely uh bake into their profit margins uh, uh they, they seek after undocumented immigrants. They go to undocumented immigrant communities. They resettle them. And then uh, the moment that they ask for any sort of back pay uh, because their wages are being stolen or better workplace safety conditions, they call ICE on themselves. And then, boom, back to rehiring. Uh, That's cool. Yeah. So they do that. That's, but, That's just good business. But, of course... Tucker Carlson and other right-wingers will look to that and say, that's why we need to shut off uh, you know, our borders or whatever. But the real solution is not necessarily to stop immigration from happening. It's to streamline the process and ensure that undocumented workers are documented and are able to advocate for better workplace conditions and organize alongside the rest of the documented labor force. That's how you get a bigger piece of the pie, not by trying to shut off the border, because that's, not very, that's never going to happen anyway. Yeah, but I, I just don't. I have a hard time with that. I mean, I know these guys are like smart econ ec economists and shit, and they went to Harvard and all that, and that's all impressive credentials, but it doesn't make sense to me when you, the so-called proletariat doesn't have enough fucking money to buy, to consume any products. That's like, the second society part. Society fucking does not, our capitalist society does not function when people are so consumed by debt that they can't consume anything. Yeah. And in my opinion, that's what's going to be the downfall of this country is that, you know, the, the, the disparaging uh, amounts of wealth, basically, it's going to cause this country to stop being able to function when people are too poor. They can't fucking buy anything. They can't support themselves. They can't do anything. And there's people just sitting on literal fucking hordes of gold like smog from you, fucking built from the goddamn uh, <clears throat> Hobbit, you know. Ethan, you're quite you're quite literally describing at least one component of a famous theorist whose name is Karl Marx and, and this is this is my boy smog the, right there the, man the falling you're you're describing the falling rate of profit and and profit's tendency to fall like right. that's that you literally described one component of that but so it's just so it's such a basic self-apparent thing that I, I don't know if I'm missing something when all these think tanks, these incredible think tanks, these people who have PhDs from Harvard and super high institutions, they don't they don't ever take that into account. Or maybe no, maybe they, they do. maybe they do. Oh, no, they do. That's this is maybe this they, exact this thing that you're talking about is a part of it. Maybe they do, and what they consider like poverty is way 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 is like you know being able to stay alive. Like, feed yourself, that's, like, where they want you to be. Precisely. And not any higher than that. Yeah, they're, they're just, they're, they're, as profit, as a consequence of technological achievements, uh, becomes, uh, the profit margins become narrower and narrower. Um, and and uh, in order to do that, you have to exhaust your working class to make sure that you're not paying them too much mm -hmm. um, because you have to make up for that profit somewhere. And without labor, there is no profit. There is no value. Um, what you look for is automation, and then what you look for is like different shortcuts of trying to 
make someone make the average worker work more, right? Um, and in turn, you have less purchasing power. So when you, the average worker, have less purchasing power, then you can't sell the products that you're making to begin with. Who's going right. to buy the fucking products like you mentioned? Yeah. So it's this never-ending cycle of trying to figure out exactly how, how much you can starve out the, the working class without ensuring that they are so starved that they recognize that they're backed into a corner and have to fight back. Well, they're way off, bro in terms of like where that bar is but you know back back to the student debt thing i mean ten thousand dollars is obviously not a lot for most people with student debt in this country but you know it's a good thing and i'm happy they did it obviously and and you know it's a big relief to the people that need it most yeah it's it's certainly a mechanism of control though i need to i need to mention this uh i can't stress this enough if you go to college you're talking about student debt yes you go to college to become a more productive worker, right? Across the board. Everyone is doing that so they can become a more productive laborer. Your output is better overall, right? You're a skilled laborer. Your output's better. This, in turn, builds the economy. This grows the economy. This is a very, this is a very good thing, right? Overall. It's so good that in other countries, they literally pay you to go to college in certain countries, right? right? Yeah. That's, that's, how, that's how much people know. Yeah. yeah, that's how necessary education is. So... <clears throat> Um, in America, however, they saddle you with debt so that even if you have improved yourself, even if, you, if, even if you become a more skilled laborer by getting an education, right, they saddle you with debt so you just take on whatever fucking job you can right after college because you have to start paying is it, your student is, loan. Is it really a grand design or is it just like the natural consequence of unchecked capitalist greed? You know what I mean? Like I have a hard time thinking it's some grand design, but when things are going in the direction that people in power are comfortable with they don't do anything to stop it and it's like the the schools charge more more and more and more and yet still if they once they start looking at a business they go well still we're getting more applications than ever turning away more people than ever our acceptance rate is lower than ever so they see these fucking psychos that are now running these these uh universities go well we can raise the price because there's so much demand yeah, and I think I think <clears throat> that um, it's just I don't I don't know that it's a grand plan, but people are happy well, to let the it. The grand go that plan way. is capitalism. They're just they're just engaging in profit seeking behavior, and it's normal for them to do this. If you don't ascribe a moral value to it, then it's just capitalism. Of course, they're going to do that. Businesses are going to do whatever the fuck they can to make more money. Colleges are businesses. That's that's so that's where it gets so fucked up. Is where these. You know, these these universities were built and have this incredible reputation. You know, when, when my dad was young, me and Dan talked about this. Our dads are probably similar ages. Mm -hmm. My dad went through UCLA and paid it off with, like, a fucking part-time minimum wage job. Yeah, my dad was in the 70s. Huh. He went to UCSD, and yeah, it, I think it was right before uh, the change <coughs> happened that you were talking about. And, yeah, I think he just paid, like, incidental costs. I think he paid just a couple thousand dollars to get a degree that's why i love when and boomers so, that's why i love when fucking boomers yeah. come out and they're like why can't you just pay you know why why can't you guys stop eating the avocado toast yeah, it's like yeah bro yeah okay grandpa like it's, it, so, <laughs> it's so pathetic but the thing is like these colleges <laughs> built their this reputation and i th i don't think they would have ever become what they are if they were charging this shit from the beginning um it's just, it's insane. I don't know what's going on with that. It's just fucked up. And on the other hand, the government is so happy to give the least responsible people in the world, newly turned 18-year-olds, sometimes 17-year-olds, fucking unfathomable amounts of debt. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. People that can't even open a credit card because they have no fucking credit. And not only that, the interest rates, like when I had student loans, the interest rates were catastrophic. I'm talking one of them had like 11%. I mean, what kind of fucking help is that? I mean, they're also really fond of getting 18-year-olds. Uh, they're, they're, they're really <laughs> fond of signing 18-year-olds yeah, in the contracts. Army, yeah. <laughs> uh, exactly. The military. <laughs> That's but exactly it, how it operates. But isn't it great that like Visa's like, nah, dude, we don't trust you with a $100 credit card. You don't have enough credit. You don't have enough. Uh, you haven't proven that you're responsible enough. And then the government's like, here's $200,000 that you can never get rid of. Yeah. Even through bankruptcy. 
Yeah, no, that's that's <coughs> that's why I said it's by design because that debt <clears throat> makes you more servile. It's just the truth. Uh, just like um, there's an a there's an opportunity to make money, but it's it's just like it's doubly efficient, is what I'm saying. That's why the government doesn't actually uh, take serious uh, steps to to combat it. That's that was what I was saying is like right. the deliberate it's mechanism behind it. Um, same with it, same with employer based insurance. Like mm -hmm. you're not going to leave your job even if you're unhappy. If your fucking like actual potential uh, health is attached to it, it's just a way to keep you <coughs> working at the same job, even if you hate it. Uh, you have no you have no way of like uh, making lateral moves uh, ever because you're just terrified that if you lose your job, you lose your health care. Right. It's inhumane. It's right, gross. Right. Right. Um. <clears throat> so that's how that's how this shit works. Yeah, but basically, just to go back, I mean. It's it, it's so demonic to even say such a thing as like, what about the people that paid their debt? It's like, do you really fucking are you really comfortable saying that publicly? Like, listen to actually what you're yes, saying. Yes, they are. We don't want to help other people. Yeah, I period. Because I on this because this uh, you know it's like, dude, what the fuck? And these are all religious people too. Like, uh, that's a very Christ-like stance to take. Well, this guy did it, so we don't want to help anybody else. Yeah, I dunked on uh, this veteran uh, that runs the Code Vets account. Thanks for your account. service, idiot. Just did you, did you see that? No, I mean, that's, the, that's basically what I said. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you want to pull it up. It's yeah, like, pull it up. We uh, got Hassan Dubs. Let's pull yeah, it up. Code of Vets. Uh, it, it's, it's on my profile. It's just I, I quote tweeted it and slammed her dumbass. Get ready, guys. We got Hassan Dubs on Twitter. I got, couple, I got a couple big ones yesterday. Oh, by the way, I, want, I forgot to say at the top of the show, we have a yeah. we have a pizza frozen pizza taste test because the song was stepping to me, continually saying that frozen pizza sucks, being classist as fuck. Yeah, saying it. why do you f eat frozen yeah. pizza? Well, we brought a bunch of frozen pizzas, and I even warned you yesterday. I said save some calories, you fucking, <clears throat> you fucking. What would? What you use it? Use the term, you you animal, you beast. No, I was gonna say like, yeah, bro, you got. I, I don't know what to say. You can be healthy and also be like, I can take a bite of this pizza without ruining my week. You know? What no, I mean? no. I just I'm I'm person. obsessive though, and I because I, I know like uh, certain things just like break me. Yeah, but you're not getting out of this. I warned you ahead of time. No, I know, I know. I, I said, said I would do it. I said I would calories. do it. Calories. Are you are you carve them out? Did you carve out calories for this? Uh, I just, well, I'm going to carve out calories later in the day for it, yes. He has no pizza. I have a, I have a tactic what, for like it. What, like 500 calories? But here, here's, we, the, here's the dunk. Are we thinking 500 calories for this, or? Uh, I'm going to try to max out at 300. 300? I'm going to take, like, one healthy enough bite from each individual pizza. One bite, it's all it takes, you know the rules. Um, and, and my tactic is to, like, ensure that... The total number of bites. I see a lot more pizzas down there. There's a lot. That's thought. what I'm saying. Like, okay, well, well, well I well, thought we I could track the calories so that uh, I thought I could just like take one bite and it'd be like four pizzas. So then it would total like one singular slice. But I think it's going to be probably like around 500 calories. Or yeah, it's fine. Okay, good. Um, go ahead. Okay, so Code Vets tweeted out uh, this this dumb thing where she said, "I grew up in poverty in the mountains of North Carolina. I ate out of a garden. I lived in government housing eh, already." Uh, Shopped at yard sales. I joined the Air Force. Eh, earned my GI Bill. I attained four degrees and created my own version of the American dream. I am not responsible for your student debt. Why are you so angry? Shut up, bitch! I mean, good for, I'm you, glad you know you why she's angry. Because this is exactly, she's right. <clears throat> the government institutes the fucking poverty draft on dummies like this. Okay, get them while they're young in the most like predatory ways that you could, uh, you know, create child soldiers. All right. I and then that's dumb, the only way. No, it's because, it's gross. It's inhumane. They, it's the only way that the the, the army. Uh, that's their only opportunity. A lot of times. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's the only way to get like. Everybody understands that education is the is the best way is the best method to get upward social mobility, and if education is is basically safeguarded, or gate kept to the elite to those who can pay, it's the true. only way you can get a fucking shitty communications degree and then, you know, start a 501c3 for veterans is by going and getting a communications <clears throat> degree after you fucking throw your body, I uh, didn't sell your I didn't, soul to the American government. I didn't fight in Iraq and see my friends blown up so that these hippies could have their fucking, could get out of debt. Yeah. The one thing, by the way, that does make me sometimes wonder if it is a grand conspiracy 
if college was affordable or free, nobody would ever join the military. That's what I'm saying. Ever. And the military nobody. already has recruitment issues right now because the number one reason why people joined the military was 9-11. Like, that's it. You can ask any recruiter. You can ask the military. They will tell you this openly. 9-11. Actually, is we the, hear that a lot from, from military people on the show yeah, we talked to. Exactly. Know. People joined. There was a massive uptick of people joining the military after 9-11. And um, and in the absence of another 9-11, 9-11-2 electric boogaloo, uh, you know, you're not going to fucking, people are not going to want to join. So you have to find different ways. You have to go to, like, you know, uh, shitty neighborhoods, underserved neighborhoods. You have to find the kids with the bad grades uh, and, and try to try to suck them in by uh, telling them they could get a fucking Dodge Charger or Camaro or something. Uh, <laughs> if they sign their soul to the military industrial complex. So I said, Americans shouldn't have to sell their bodies to the imperialist forces working at the behest of the military industrial complex to get benefits. Most countries offer to its citizens unconditionally. You fucking dumb troglodyte is what I said to her. Yeah. I heard the army actually set up a recruitment booth at the uh, local kindergarten there. I mean, they, they were doing some really crazy shit on Twitch. Like they were offering like fucking xbox controllers and shit to like 14 year olds you know, if they promised that they would like xbox go Xbox controllers yeah that's a good investment for them you know they kept trying to sponsor our show and we always said nah yeah but that would have been